Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more of our All Your Trade or Belong to Us campaign in Europa Universalis 4. I'm gonna tech up admin anyway, even though I know we're about to take some land. Defensive mentality, eh, whatever, it doesn't really benefit us too much. I'd rather probably have the tech 25 artillery fire value, better artillery. And uh, it's probably about that time to attack Hyothaya again. Yeah, February of 18, so one year to go there. I could attack Malacca if I wanted to fight Ming. Yeah, Ming would protect him. You could also attack Pegu, but they've got their own allies. I need to attack the rest of Naples, need to attack Castile. Turns out we've got a lot of people we need to attack. Oh, look at that. How cute. <sighs> I liked it in the, uh, the campaign I did with Shen, where England just, like, destroyed all their forts. In this campaign, they've actually got level 8 forts. I don't know why. Maybe it's just due to the way that they've expanded? Probably. We could become a Defender of the Faith again. Not a huge justification for it, though. And again, these forts are going to block me from doing much, aren't they? We're now trading in naval supplies. Ooh, I would like to keep that one. So the problem is if I don't end this war soon, I can't start coring. I need to start coring like right away. That's going to be the thing that slows me down, is coring speed. Fortunately, this is the final fort, and this is a level 2 fort. So we actually have a bonus to siege value because of how crappy it is. Agricultural Revolution. Alright, um, one more claim on Ravensburg. I don't even know why I want to expand there, I just, it just seemed like a good idea at the time. And let's see, how much overextension is going to cost us if we take a bunch of this land. Obviously I want the stuff that's like really, really cheap. Well, they got parts of Australia, yeah I like that. Hey, if it's 0% overextension, why wouldn't I take it, right? He's just, I'm just, I have to. I have to take all of it. Maybe not all of it, but, like, my goodness. The amount of land we can take in one war. So much of the 13 colonies. Um, that's 75 war score, though. The thing is, we don't really have a lot from ticking war score yet, so let's go ahead and continue to siege things down once we get Meath. 
Um, and then just siege down the remainder of this, kill the rest of his army. His enthusiasm's already low, but... Forty-nine war score. There's another fort up there. Oh, irritating. Still only fifty war score, despite having Meath fall. Kind of expected more than that. He's got a fort up there. What a little bastard. There's a level 8 fort, no less. Mecklenburg just pieced him out. Alright, looks like we're going after these these forts here. But, it's, um, we're into this next year, so we need to declare the next war on Ayodhya. What if I redid the war score and just made sure that we weren't taking anything that cost overextension? Just focus on the stuff that's, that's like, free. Granted, it's going to cost a lot to core, but... So the, the stuff that's over extension must have been land that was conquered by Great Britain or Great Britain's colonies and owned by uh, Native Americans. So 100 peace deal. I don't think I can get that much. That much war score, that is. Of course, I don't really have to do anything else. I could just sit on his capital for five years, and then I get 100 war score automatically. So, I guess we do that. Why don't we do that and just go focus on another war for now? Like, say, against Ayutthaya, who is allied with people that don't matter. That seems quite reasonable to me. That is so much land. Not exactly the best general, but... Actually, we'll put the shock, the, the fire general in charge of that army. No chance for you to westernize, okay? Squish. That's your capital. These two forts are being taken care of. His army doesn't really matter. Leaderless army should be okay against that, unless he combines the two, in which case he'll have to reinforce. But um, Apparently we're going to just knock this thing down at 16 day siege times. Who knows, maybe Great Britain will go bankrupt. That would be funny. I mean, I'm not asking for much. It's just a 100% peace deal. Suddenly we have far too much money again. This will be your job this time. I'll throw the whole thing at it, I guess. Then we'll spread back out on some more of the, the forts, and this will be the war that we actually go for, like, roughly 100 overextension from. That fort there. Um, is 
See how much easier it is to get war score against a little guy? Versus having to fight Great Britain. We already have more war score against Iathai, and we just started it. I'm making 300 ducats a month now. Gosh. Apparently Great Britain's been at war with almost everyone. Alright, I'm going to get just a couple more occupations. I feel like 80 war scores should be plenty. His enthusiasm has to be a low. Can you imagine it being any higher than low? I know I can't. Okay, so we sort by war score costs. We go for the cheapest stuff first. Uh, well, actually, let's start with coastal stuff just to guarantee that we can core as quickly as we can. So we take coastal only from the war leader who is the, the guy, and then we start going cheapest by war score. I think it's pretty much just going to be his entire country, isn't it? It's not quite willing to do 100 war score, but it's also too much overextension anyway. 99.6, that sounds great. Add everything in that trade area to a trade company to reduce unrest. Cardinal in administration has ended. Wow, you picked the wrong province to spawn in, didn't you? Where was the other rebellion? Okay, so Great Britain's at 60%. Um, I think I'm still just going to sit and wait until I have 100% from, from being at... You know, it's only... Well, it has been five years, but it's not been five years since I occupied London. It just feels a lot easier to me than trying to run down all the other stuff that's out there. And as much as I want to take admin tech, I'm not going to because we're going to be coring a bunch of stuff. Absolute ton of stuff. The problem is that anything that I take this distant overseas, I can't actually convert this, can I? Well, no, that's not true. If I convert it first, I can get the papal influence for conversion. I think. Looks like uh, Brazil is kicking Italian Canada's ass. Aha! <laughs> it's the Italian Canadian peasants! <laughs> They've risen up to help! They've apparently gained another merchant. Whenever I don't know where to put a merchant, I just send him here. position for that one. We have a couple of guys who are late to the party. Late frigates. And I should be fabricating more on Castile, Portugal, all that stuff. 
for like the eighth time in this campaign. Are you actually trying to pick off my navy? You little bastard. You are. Look at that. You almost got him too. Sneaky little shit. Get him. I'm gonna send 300, 250 ships at you. You're gonna like it. Oh no, I lost one ship and I gained two heavies. Good. By all means, we should do this again sometime, Great Britain. How on... Whoa, he has 20.38? I think that that rounds down to 20 at the end of every month, right? Yeah. That's too bad. It would have been cool if we could get more. Negative 69 reasons for peace. I suppose we could try to peace out some of his friends. That takes us up to 80%. And now he'll accept. Cool. Okay, so unfortunately, um, some of this land is too far in, so we gotta, like, undo that. Ah, uh, I see. So some of it's the overextension. Yeah, I'd rather do that. That one is coastal. That's all acceptable. Seems fine. Oh, I did pick one that has 1.8%. Hmm. I kind of prefer to have some of these. All right, cool. So, there we go. Um, this is going to be an absolute ton of aggressive expansion. Who cares? And uh, I'm going to have to spend a lot of points on coring. But first, we're going to... Before it, it becomes a colonial nation after our cores, we want to convert it all. So I think we... Uh, oh, damn, I can't, I can't take the Defender of the Faith from him? Crap. That's unfortunate. I was going to take all this land, and I ended up taking none of it. Oh well. So we're not going to core anything right now. I want to make sure that I can convert it all and get the points. And again, I'm assuming that I'm actually going to get full points for that. I don't know that I will. I might get less for converting distant overseas, like on the, in the New World. It's quite possible. But at least while we have a 15-year truce, he can't embargo us. Here I was thinking I was going to take London. Nope. Thank goodness the coring cost is going to be relatively cheap. Threes. Feels good to pay exactly one admin per development. However, that's a lot of unrest. Full overextension, separatism, intolerance. Tell you what, since I only care about converting it, I'm going to just raise autonomy. Why does this not show up in this list? Annoying. I'm allowed to increase autonomy, but it doesn't show up on this list, and it doesn't show up on this list. But I can click it from here. Weird. Our government type will help it go down very quickly, as long as we stay at peace, which is unlikely.
Look at this, despite 100% autonomy. Look at the trade power that we get. Like, we'll still get some. Still get the normal amount. I think we had a bunch of junk down here. Great Britain, you've been busy, I'll admit. These guys I don't really care about. Sure, Bohemia, we can be we can stay friends for a while. Alright, cool. I'm going to take a break here. I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you soon.